Note, you are viewing an archive iteration of this file. This file is a previous iteration of an active document. It has been locked and archived, and any information contained within may be inaccurate or fail to reflect the most recently available data. Please contact this anomaly's current containment director or email your int skip fn server administrator for more details. Pierre Menard, Director of Pedophysics. Item number. SCP-4028 Object Class Keda Security Level 4 Special Containment Procedures The development of effective containment procedures for SCP-4028 is ongoing. Meanwhile, personnel are to focus on the expungement of all canonical deviations in fiction caused by SCP-4028. To accomplish this, the following measures are in place. A Foundation-operated bot is to monitor academic journals focused on Western literature and flag articles discussing texts deviating from canons for review. A Foundation-operated bot is to monitor online fiction communities and flag discussions regarding texts deviating from canons for review. Texts which deviate from a star which literary canons are to be reviewed by Mobile Task Force Role 1, the professors, to determine whether or not these deviations constitute evidence of alterations by SCP-4028. When an altered text is identified, a joint operation conducted by Role 1, Move 4, Debuggers, and Gamma 5, Red Herrings, is to expunge all knowledge of these texts from public records. When feasible, altered texts are to be restored to their unaltered state. Otherwise, these texts are to be destroyed. Description SCP-4028 is Alonso Quijano, the protagonist of Miguel de Cervantes' 17th century Spanish novel, the ingenious nobleman Don Quixote of La Mancha, or Don Quixote. In Don Quixote, Alonso Quijano is a Spanish noble who goes mad from reading chivalric romances. He proclaims himself a knight errant and takes the name Don Quixote de la Mancha, recruiting a simple farmer, Sancho Panza, to act as his loyal squire. Don Quixote was published by Cervantes in two parts, the first in 1605 and second, in 1615, it is widely considered to be one of the most influential works in Western literature. SCP-1428 is a sapient metafictional construct capable of inhabiting and altering fictional text narratively adjacent to the one it occupies. Adjacency is determined via characters or settings shared between texts. SCP-4028 alters stories it enters to more closely fit its ideals of knightly conduct. This includes defending those it perceives as helpless, striking down those it perceives as wicked, and extolling the virtues of romantic chivalry. Addendum 4028-1 Examples of Altered Texts Original Text Alterations an 1845 copy of the New York Tribune contained the poem, The Raven. After the seventh refrain, Alonso Quijano arrives on horseback and strikes the raven down with an axe. The remainder of the poem is a debate between a narrator and Alonso regarding who is lovelier, the narrator's lost honor, or Alonso's beloved Dulcinea. It concludes with a fistfight. Dulcinea's true name was Aldonza Lorenzo. She was a peasant farm girl who never knew Alonso existed. An 1847 English edition of A Christmas Carol. After Ebenezer Scrooge arrives at the churchyard, Alonso Cujano charges the ghost of Christmas yet to come on horseback, striking it down. Alonso then carries Ebenezer home atop an exhausted Rosinande an aging, long-suffering steed. The story continues as before, and Ebenezer awakening 
Miss Bed as a changed man. An additional paragraph at the end mentions the world's gratitude to the mysterious knight who is Lou Death itself. In 1876 English edition of Memoirs of a Woman of Pleasure of Fanny Hill, Fanny writes to Madame about a mysterious knight who arrived on horseback and struck down a brothel moments before it lured her into its doors. The stranger then gave her a sack of gold acquired from a miserly fellow who had no more need of it. She used this money to establish an orphanage and school for poor and vulnerable children such as herself. The remainder of the book consists of Fanny explaining the pleasures and meaning behind various types of flower arrangements, complete with illustrations. An 1881 French edition of Justine or the Misfortunes of Virtue. As the story begins, Alonso Quijano begins the 12-year-old Justine. He accompanies her until the novel's end. All encounters which previously resulted in Justine's torture, assault, and or rape are now resolved by Alonso preemptively striking down the responsible parties as soon as they appear. Justine eventually reunites with her sister, Juliette. Alonso strikes down a lightning bolt intended for them both, then challenges the narrator to a duel. The story hastily concludes with both sisters receiving a large inheritance and living happily ever after. A 1956 English edition of The Fellowship of the Ring Alonso Cujano appears at the Council of Elrond, where he suggests a joust to determine who should carry the ring. After this idea is dismissed by Gandalf, Alonso states that he will finish this full errand by self then. He takes the ring and rides to Mordor, striking down all evil doers he encounters along the way. Once there, he returns the ring to Sauron, as it is your property, and therefore yours by right, and chances him to a duel. Sauron accepts, and is immediately struck down. A 1982 English edition of The Dark Tower, The Gunslinger. Immediately after the opening line, the man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. Alonso appears on horseback. He overtakes Walter, the man in black, and incapacitates him with a blow from his sword, then drags him back to Roland, the gunslinger. Once Walter awakens, he is forced to duel Roland honorably, under Lorenzo's watchful eye. Roland strikes Walter down. The remainder of the novel consists of magnets where Alonso instructs Roland how to be a virtuous knight, including taking Jake on as a squire and fighting evil throughout the wastes. A 1997 English edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone When Lucas Hagrid arrives to tell Harry that he has been accepted into Hogwarts, Alonso arrives on horseback and strikes the half-giant down. Alonso then explains to Harry that giants, wizards, and sorcerers all traffic with the devil and must be avoided at all costs. The remainder of the novel consists of Harry living a life of patient penitence with the Dorsleys, who have been inspired by Alonso's example to become kind and virtuous guardians. Addendum 4028-2 Discovery and Designation Evidence for the existence of SCP-4028 was first noted by Foundation personnel in 2005 after the discovery of a manuscript previously thought lost. The orphan story, written between 1608 and 1615 by Martin de Leon y Cardenas, a Mulligan-born monk. The orphan story features Alonso Cujano as a supporting character. He criticizes a narrative for failing to conform to the virtues of romantic chivalry, and spends several pages extolling these virtues, then challenges Sir Francis Drake to a duel. Imbecile. Researchers could not determine whether the incredibility between Alonso Cujano's appearance in The Orphan Story and Don Quixote constituted an anomaly or a collaboration between their respective authors. This led to the involvement of the Pedophysics Department, a fictitious department created for the purposes of investigating, counteracting, and containing allegorical 
and all metaphysical anomalies to settle with a dispute. After significant debate, the use of SCP-423, a sapient metafictional construct capable of entering and exploring textual narratives, to determine whether Alonso Quijano's appearance in the orphan story was anomalous was authorized. Notably, Dr. Pierre Menard, a leading scholar of Don Quixote and the director of the Pedophysics Department at the time, requested that its opposition to this motion be noted in SCP-4028 documentation. Better to let sleeping dogs lie. SCP-423 was instructed to a journal and briefed on its task by handwritten note by Agent O'Hara. SCP-423 Journal Excerpt Date, 21st of August, 2005 Interviewer, Agent O'Hara Hello, SCP-423, you are going to be entering a 17th century Spanish manuscript entitled The Orphan Story. We need you to determine if one of the characters in it was inserted anonymously. Okay, I don't know Spanish though. What's the book about? We've translated a copy of to English for you. It's about a Vandela-born orphan who travels to the Spanish Empire in the Americas. Neat, so uh, what character am I investigating? Alonso Tijano. He appears near the end in the segment where Sir Francis Drake launches a failed attack on Puerto Rico. Okay. Wait. Alonso Quijano? That is correct. Alonso Quijano? Yes. Don Quixote? Yes. The Don Quixote? Correct. You're sending me in after Don Quixote. Is there a problem? I... Uh, Look, not to be a dick, but do you have any idea who the heck this guy is? You're not saying me after some no or cut out or hoddy toddy metaphor. This is the man of La Mancha. His fourth war bricks have got fourth war bricks. He's got fan fiction about himself in his own story, which itself is a fan fiction of a story that doesn't even exist. He basically wrote the book on meta fiction. Like, literally, it's his thing. So, can you do this? Jeez, yeah, just, uh, don't blame me with things go spoilerly, okay? Just be careful. After entering an English translation of the orphan story, researchers note that all references to SCP-4028 within it disappeared. This change occurred simultaneously across all known copies of the manuscript. Immediately thereafter, SCP-423 returned to his journal and reinitiated contact with Agent O'Hara. SCP-423 Journal Excerpt Date, 23rd of August, 2005 Interviewer Agent O'Hara Crap! 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 crap. SCP-423, what happened? I think I take more off! I think... Uh, Look, you may want to call some people and tell them that we could have a serious meta-narrative crisis on our hands. Please explain. So, first he thinks I'm some sort of evil wizard, right? I tell him I'm not. I tell him I was sent here to figure out what his deal is, to find out if he's in the wrong book. I tell him I was sent by the Foundation, this big organization that investigates anomalies like him. Then he sits down and gets real quiet for a while and, uh... And he tells me if the Foundation opposed the virtues of knightly chivalry and... What do you tell him? Look, it's not like you guys aren't good sometimes, but sometimes you're, you know, not so good. Sometimes you're kind of bad. It's complicated, okay? And that's what I told him. It's complicated. I kept trying to explain that. But, uh, this is not a guy who gets complicated. So, after a while, he just stands, draws his busted up sword, and says some stuff, and I just, I just ran! I just ran as fast as I could! What did he say? You need to call your people! You need to call them, and tell them he's coming! Fred, what did he say? He said you sound like giants! One week after this event, SCP-4028 began to manifest in multiple works throughout Western literature. 
SCP-4028 has since been designated as anomalous. I warned them. There's no reasoning with that stubborn old fool. Note, you are currently viewing an outdated iteration of this document. To view a more recent revision, click here. Otherwise, please contact this article's current administrator for more details. Note, you are viewing an archive iteration of this file. This file is a previous iteration of an active document. It has been locked and archived. Any information contained within may be inaccurate or fail to reflect the most recently available data. Please contact this anomaly's current containment director or email your Inkscape FN server administrator for more details. Pierre Menard, Director of Pedophysics. Item number SCP-4028 Object Class Keda Security Level 4 Special Containment Procedures All assets available to the Department of Analytics and Pedophysics Department are to be dedicated to the containment and or neutralization of SCP-4028. The application of anomalies and power technology to this end has been authorized. A foundation operated bot is to review Inkscip FN servers for references to SCP-4028. Corrupted files are to be isolated and reported to the on-duty server administrator for review and correction. All proposals for the containment and or neutralization of SCP-4028 are to be immediately forwarded to the current director of the Pedophysics Department, Dr. Pierre Menard. Don't bother. I won't waste any more time reading them. Description SCP-4028 is Alonso Quijano, the protagonist of Miguel de Cervantes' 17th century Spanish novel, The Ingenious Nobleman Don Quixote of La Mancha, or Don Quixote. In Don Quixote, Alonso Quijano is a Spanish noble who goes mad from reading chivalric romances. He proclaims himself a knight errant and takes the name Don Quixote de la Mancha, recruiting a simple farmer, Sancho Panza, to act as his loyal squire. Perhaps too loyal, senor. Don Quixote was published by Cervantes in two parts. The first in 1605 and the second in 1615. It is widely considered to be one of the most influential works in Western literature. SCP-4028 is a sapient metaphysical construct capable of inhabiting and altering digital and physical documents adjacent to the one it occupies. Adjacency is determined by references to persons, objects, or settings shared between documents. SCP-4028 alters the document it enters to more closely fit its ideals of romantic chivalry. As of 2007, SCP-4028 inhabits Inkscape FN servers where it has continued to alter Foundation documents. Addendum 4028-1 Examples of Altered Documentation SCP Article Deviations SCP 055. Alonso Quijano arrives on horseback and charges into SCP-055's containment cell, destroying the exterior wall. SCP-055 is revealed to be a beautiful princess who tells Alonso that because of his courage and virtue, her curse is lifted. She offers him her hand in marriage as compensation for his good deeds. He politely declines, telling her that a good deed is its own reward. Furthermore, his heart is worn to his lovely Dulcinea. Her name is Aldonza Lorenzo. She wishes him well on his quest. What quest? They embraced, then part ways. SCP-076 As Alonso continues on his quest, what quest? SCP-076 unexpectedly attacks and knocks him from his horse. Alonso rises, 
salutes SCP-076 of his sword and engages him in honorable combat. The battle lasts for the better half of the day, after which both men grew wary. Impressed by Lorenzo's prowess, SCP-076 admits that they are equally matched in matters of martial skill. Please, you and I could scarcely butter our toast without cutting ourselves. The two begrudgingly acknowledge their respect for one another and part ways. SCP-140 The book, A Chronicle of the Devas, had been replaced with a copy of History of Don Quixote of La Mancha. A non-existent fictional text mentioned several times throughout Don Quixote and falsely presented by the author Cervantes as the primary source for Don Quixote. The article briefly describes the contents of the book, which detail Alonso Quijano's many romantic adventures, ending with him retiring in glory, spending the rest of his days looking after windmills with his loyal squire. Imbecile! We both know that is not how the story ends. SCP-682 As Lorenzo Cujano continues on his quest to save his friend from the giants. What? SCP-682 emerges from his containment cell and attacks Lorenzo by breathing a wall of flame. Alonso bravely charges into the fire, suffering numerous burns. Ultimately, Alonso slays SCP-682, but at the cost of Dear Rosalante's life. Stop this madness! You will accomplish nothing! Turn back! SCP-1013 As Lorenzo Cohano continues on foot, SCP-1013 emerges from its containment cell and paralyzes him with its gaze. Alonso struggles to break free, but SCP-1013 succeeds in biting through the grooves of his armor before he can strike it down process of ossification, transformation of soft tissue into bone starts at the source of the bite and spreads into surrounding flesh. Weakened but unbowed, Alonso ventures on. Cover that obstinia! Do not hear me! Turn back! SCP-2200, a swordsman with skin like silver and sword of light, steps forth to cut Alonso Carano down. One, you fool! Though he fights with courage and honor, Alonso feels his body weaken beneath each successive blow. Run! The swordsman scores several deep cuts. Alonso's blood petrifies even as it sleeps from its wounds. With what strength remains in him, Alonso finally strikes the swordsman down. Why are you doing this? I'm not worth any of this! He limbs forward, using his sword as a crutch. I'm nothing! I've always been nothing! My whole life is nothing! Though his wounds are grievous and fatal, he continues on. Please, Sancho! SCP-1428 Struggling for each breath, Alonso Quijano at last stands before Dr. Pierre Minard. It is only then that Alonso reveals his true identity, Sancho Panza, loyal retainer and proud squire for the bravest, noblest knight who has ever lived. Sancho attempts to return his master's sword. He cannot lift it. His many wounds overwhelm him. He falls. But just before he hits the ground, an old fool catches him. Then, and then, I, I. Note, you are currently reading an outdated iteration of this document. To view a more recent revision, click here. Otherwise, please contact this anomaly's current containment director, or email your int skip fn server administrator for more details. Item number, SCP-4028, Object Class, Euclid. The Foundation has purchased a property affected by SCP-4028 through a shell company and designated it as Professional Site 
4028. Two Foundation personnel are to remain on site at all times to perform daily maintenance on wind turbines located on the property. Damaged turbines are to be repaired immediately. If required, Foundation personnel are to provide a cover story explaining the damage as an ongoing prank carried out by local residents. Description SCP-4028 is a recurring phenomenon localized in a patch of land approximately 3 square kilometers in area within the region of La Mancha, a fertile but arid plateau located in central Spain. Windmills and wind turbines built in its area of effect will periodically malfunction after being assaulted by two, by two undetectable assailants. Attempts to either stop or interfere with the phenomenon have thus far proven futile. The cause or motivation behind this phenomenon remains uncertain. Well, they could be giants.